102.1 WROI. WROIFM.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and soon audio and video on RTC Channel 4. And yes, Tim and Brand are still in the studio. Hey, guys. There we go. See? See? All right. Everything, everything is under control now, so we can go across the console and say good morning to the president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, and that's John Alley. Good, good morning. Good morning. Now things are going to get out of control once you've come over here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going out for coffee. I'll see you later. Okay. All right. You guys just take it and go, okay? We've got it. Yeah. You got special guests with you today. We, I brought back up today. Uh, got a couple folks here that's got an event coming up okay. uh, in June. And so I thought I'd kind of do a really quick board report and then turn it over to them because it's a pretty uh, amazing thing they're wanting to do community wellness and trying to get everybody out there, get some activity, get everybody healthy. Sure. You know, it just hurts me from a hospital. You know, we need business, but, but we're uh, we're going to promote this wellness. We, we, we got to get we these want people, people to stay healthy. We want them to stay that's, healthy. It's very altruistic of you. Yes, really is, yes. <laughs> Started off the board meeting yesterday uh, with uh, Dr. Keith Tomei is coming in. He's going to be our new general surgeon. He's starting May first, and be on the second floor. He'll be joining Dr. Nile in the Rochester Surgical Services. Um, you know, it's going to kind of expand us, let us uh, move out to more patients in Fulton and surrounding counties. And uh, Dr. Uh, Tomei has a lot of different uh, things he's done in his past. He's been uh, taught at a university, was actually the uh, surgery instructor. So very nice background, very well-rounded background. One of the things that he might be bringing to our area, we're still talking to him a little bit, is some minor uh, cosmetic procedures. Uh, he comes from the St. Louis market and did okay. a lot of cosmetic surgery there. So I'm kind of conservative. I said, I'd rather we kind of crawl than walk before we run. So I think we're going to start kind of simple, a lot of simple procedures. If that goes well, then maybe start moving up and looking at more advanced procedures as we get more tenure with him in the organization. Okay. Uh, most of the board meeting was taken up. Uh, we had Travis Albright, director of our information services, came in and actually did an update to the board on our uh, cyber attack we had the first of the year. We're kind of behind us now. Uh, took uh, quite a bit of time to get stuff in place and uh, you know it's kind of interesting right after we kind of had our ransomware cyber attack it started appearing on different TV shows you know where they were saying they were having the same issue so uh, we're to I think on probably 95 percent complete of what we need to do to help mitigate it in the future and one of the things that we brought in a cyber security uh, consulting firm out of Chicago that's all they do they said you'll never prevent it uh, there's no way to stop it if somebody really wants to do it. What we've done, we've put enough uh, stops in place that's going to be difficult. And, uh, you know, we worked with the FBI and the, the consulting firm to say, you know, what can we do on this? And, you know, basically the, the hard part is these people do it and they're, it's non-traceable. You have no idea who they are. It or is, where they come or from. Or where they come from. Uh, historically, you know, you hate to pick on one, but most of these cyber attacks they can trace back to somewhere in, in Russia. Sure. Um, and uh, I became an instant expert. I spent two full weekends <laughs> on Google uh, going through and looking at this. And it, it's scary what these people can do. And one of the things is they're getting out of uh, narcotics, they're getting out of uh, gun trades, stuff like that, just going into this cyber ransomware. Uh, make more money. Sure. And they can't be caught. You know, it's, it's virtually impossible to catch them. So, you know, it, it's kind of a tough on industry they're targeting hospitals schools some county governments now are starting to see it because you know it's an integral part of a community so if they can shut down your IT system you've got to do something or if they can steal that information that's in there they can do something with yeah it too. and that was my biggest fear was did they you know get any of our patient information or employee information and when we did discuss this with the FBI you know the, their first words were don't worry about it they don't want data right. if they steal data we can find them all they want you to do is pay the fee to get you know the unlock keys. Right. Well, I'm more concerned, so I, I said no. I want somebody to come in. So most of the uh, cybersecurity consulting came in, went through every file, every computer in the hospital. Wow. They were here right at three weeks because uh, I wanted to be absolutely positive we had no breach of data. And their final report was there was no breach of data, so that was good. Yep. But we have put in a, a lot of different firewalls, different protections now that you know we thought we were good in the past just not good enough but still somebody wants to come in you know they could still do it and what we've come up with with our now uh, you know I think we're probably more secure than Fort Knox I think in our <laughs> IT system but what you want to do is, is make enough doors that these people have to try to open 
that they get discouraged and find somebody easier. And, you know, you hate to say that, but, you know, what they're going to look for is who's going to be the easiest to get into. We're no longer that easy person. Uh, so we, we feel that uh, we have now what's called intrusion detection. So as soon as uh, the algorithm sees activity that's out of the norm, it will shut that down. So we've locked that door, and we've locked numerous different access avenues to the hospital. So now, you know, we're, we're better than we were, but we're never going to be 100% safe. But fairly confident now that, you know, if somebody does try to do a cyber attack again, they're going to get very discouraged, and they're going to move on to a much easier target. So, you know, right now, a lot of uh, home computers get it, and they've stopped going after them because, you know, if you attack my home computer, I'm just going to wipe the hard drive and start over. Right. When you do a business, you can't do that. Uh, there's too much data out there to try to you know, just start from ground zero. So, uh, John, this is obviously too something you're going to have to keep up with on a regular basis. We've got to keep up with, yeah. And uh, one of the things we did with our cybersecurity firm is, at some point within the next year, they're going to try to attack our system, which is scary because they helped design it. So they're going to know, <laughs> it, you know, all the weaknesses, sure. and it's up to us to make sure we've plugged all those holes. Okay. So you know, that's that's kind of the good part is we never know. Less, so we've always got to be vigilant and watch for unusual activity and we've got it set up now that will notify four different individuals in the organization of any activity coming in through the computer network that's outside our norm and it, it might be something simple and the, you know the bad part is the other day we had a new vendor that we had to set up immediately it said it's attack right we didn't tell it this is a, a vendor that we can allow in so it is working but uh it was an interesting uh about uh, sure. 10 days as sure. we went through this and our poor IT guys, uh, we, we wore them thin. Uh, they <laughs> That's spent, too. Uh, one of them had 80 hours in a normal right. work week. Uh, they just a lot of time involved doing this. But we learned a lot. Uh, we've actually now started sharing our experience with other hospitals around the state. I did a presentation to the uh, Council on Rural of the Indiana Hospital Association, which is primarily all the rural hospitals in the state. We got a lot of calls after the meeting saying, hey, can you talk to my IT guys? Uh, our IT director, Travis, is going down doing a presentation to another group of hospitals, uh, I think, in the next couple of weeks. You know, it's part of you says, oh, we got hacked. You know, don't tell anybody. No, we need to share that because if we can prevent this from happening to somebody else, you know, that's our job. We exactly. need to do that. And, you know, we're finding out there's been a lot of minor attacks on uh, most of the hospitals in the state. And what we're kind of determined was we had a real small one uh, six months prior to this. They went after one file. You know, we, we it was a critical file. Right. Paid the ransom, got it sure. back, 15 minutes up and operational. We're feeling that was kind of that first vulnerability. They found where's the hole? They found it. You know, we thought we patched the hole. They came back in again. So okay. uh, it's, it's up to us to educate other people so this doesn't happen to them. Uh, we got off fairly easy. It wasn't a lot of money we had to pay. I mean, it, it sounds like it could have been much worse. Right. And uh, so, spent a lot of time, most of the board meeting was just discussing that, showing the board when it happened, what happened, and what we've done now to prevent it from happening again. Exactly. And uh, so, they, they were very pleased when we were done that the confidence level, I think, is a little better than it was. But we emphasized we can't stop it at 100%. But, you know, we're probably at 95% right now. It's going to be very, very difficult. And uh, so, we're hoping if they try, they want to go to an easier target, they'll move on to somebody else. Okay. Then we get into the financials for the month. Uh, for the month of March, we had total patient revenue about 11.1 million. We wrote off 5.3 million, which is kind of our normal write-offs. Uh, we had some other operating revenue about 956,000, and that's just some other joint ventures that we're in brings in some revenue. So it left us money to to run the place on of about 6.8 million. Uh, we had uh, expenses of almost $5 million, so we did operate with about a $1.8 million profit for the month. Now, that's a, a little jaded, and you say, oh, my gosh, that's a big month. State of Indiana, every now and then, will give us, uh, it's called DISH money, okay. which means they've been holding our Medicaid payments as a group for the whole hospital, for the whole state, and they see how much funds they have left. Then they go back, and what they try to do is make that Medicaid payment up to a Medicare level. So we did receive about 1.3, 1.4 million uh, for partial, all of 2016 and a partial year 2017. And it, it throws us because the state fiscal year is so much different than ours. So their 2018 year starts July 1 of this year. So 
you know, you're trying to figure out, we got some 16, 17, but we're in state fiscal year 18 coming. It's very convoluted at some time, but you know we had about uh, that money came in. So that kind of at the same time, that's good money to that's have. That's good money. Sure. Yes, sure. Uh, you know we that's money we just sock away for future right. uh, if we have an emergency or if we want to do a major project. So you know, kind of distorts that one month as we move forward. But other than that, that was okay. pretty well the the board meeting. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn <laughs> the experts here on the wellness program we got coming up. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk with Jason C and. Betsy Hines. Hi. Good morning to both of you. Nice to have Good you morning. here. Good morning. Glad to be here. All right. Let's talk about the event. <clears throat> talk about what we're doing. Sure. So what we've got is a um, a wellness and a wellness initiative uh, for the community. We've got a uh, a committee at the hospital that's been uh, put together a little over a year ago, and uh, you know our outreach is to be uh, to promote wellness in the community, and uh, we've uh, first partnered with uh, Purdue Extension with uh, Betsy and uh, Nancy Hudson. Uh, and did a Dining with Diabetes course. It's a four-week course uh, helping diabetics uh, with meals and planning and prepping and all that. Had a really nice turnout and have actually done two classes this spring. Um, so um, that was our first uh, community involvement in, in reaching out uh, in that way. Um, another state and federal, I don't know if CMS regulates our... S some of the, the pressure being put onto us by the federal government now is as a healthcare provider, you need to do wellness for your community. As we move forward in the future, our payments that we get for our Medicare payment uh, patients will be based on our community involvement. Right now, it's all voluntary, but you know, I'd rather we do it now when we're not being held, to, you know, to the fire, so we get it down. So we're, when it does become mandatory, we're already doing it. It's second nature. It's nothing that's going to disrupt us. So this is a first step in that community wellness program that we're going to be mandated to do within the next two to three years. Okay. So there's some initiatives that they kind of bring down as far as uh, uh, the three main initiatives are smoking, cessation, uh, infant mortality, and obesity. Uh, so we decided to target obesity and um, come up with a community walking program. You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, so we are starting the community walking program in June. Um, we are wanting teams to consist of up to six people. So you can either get people together from your workplace, um, just people that you know that are sure. friends with throughout the community, but we want this to be a community-wide effort. And you are going to track your walking for three months. So um, it goes from June and then we will have the last walk in August and then we'll have a celebration in September of what people walked. Mm -hmm. um, so just trying to walk as much as you can and we're going to kind of track it like you can walk to New York City and we'll post it on the Facebook page. I'm um, just showing to kind of show how far you're walking in comparison to different John cities. John in for that one. Make it kind of cool. I've already turned us in for 300 miles. Okay, so we're good. It is an honor system, so we're yes. going to trust okay. that, that you actually do the walking. But, uh, you know, the idea is to turn in weekly mileage and we kind of do some encouragement to say, you know, uh, how many miles you walked and where that might have gotten you. And uh, so that kind of puts it into perspective that way. Um, another thing that we're going to do is a, a monthly community walk. Uh, so one Saturday each month, June, July, and August, we're going to walk from the hospital to downtown. And that's part of our community involvement. We've uh, partnered with Purdue uh, and the Rochester Downtown Partnership. Uh, Chrissy uh, Rossworm has uh, helped uh, bring that initiative. So we want to obviously promote our downtown. Uh, we think we've got a, a really nice one. And um, with Webb's Pharmacy, uh, Flirt, and the Rochester Family Martial Arts are going to be some designated okay. places that we go, plus the farmer's market, of course. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's going to be the, uh, our walking okay. program. I, I turned in my goal to them, and they de declined it. Mine was from my <laughs> office to Dairy Queen. So that's, they, they said, no, that no, wasn't going to work. Count. That doesn't well, count. you're still walking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it is a free program. Um, we'll be meeting at the hospital and walking to mm. downtown. Okay. So yeah, anyone right. can participate as long as you sign up and register. Yeah. So this month, we're going to start seeing some things promoted social media-wise, um, getting out there as far as how to register and, and how to sign up. So we're uh, excited about that and uh, look forward to seeing people come out. So the whole, the whole concept here basically is wellness, yeah. and we have targeted obesity. All right, how does walking fit into this? I mean, you hear over and over again how good walking is for you. So comment on that, if you would, please. Um, I just think it's an easy way to get people out and get moving. Pretty much anyone can get out and walk, and it's an easy way to get some active living, 
um, in your life and just you can have fun with it with other friends and um, just one of the best ways probably that the majority of the population can participate in. Okay. It's free. It's easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as a more senior individual, <laughs> it's low impact. Uh, you know, right. as we right. get older, our, our body right. doesn't take what it used to. So by getting out and walking, you know, it's low impact on the body. You get cardiovascular out of it. You get respiratory out of it. Plus, you get the, the fitness of burning calories. So it's, it's kind of a threefold benefit, and it's, you know, not having to run. You're not having to do jumping jacks or cows. <laughs> just a nice walk, and uh, it, it fits fits what we're wanting to do for the community. Probably behoove somebody that wants to do this, though, to have a decent pair of walking shoes. Yes. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to it, you know, yeah. you're Absolutely. gonna you're gonna want your feet to be comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Another part of what we're going to do is um, provide some email uh, education. So when you sign up, you'll you'll uh, sign up with your email, and then we will uh, weekly send out some education and some information to help uh, you know talk about hydration, talk about proper uh, shoes and and uh, apparel, and uh, just be able to just better understand what this is doing for you. What would you like to see coming out of this? I mean, have you set some goals that you would like to see? Have you set some criteria out there that say, okay, we'd like to see so many people participating, that type of thing? Um, not really any specific. You know, we've we've talked about the mileage. You know, if we could if we could do this together and say that we've walked around the world or something along those lines has really just kind of been our uh, I sure. idea. We haven't really set any specific and it would be great to see these people continue walking after the program also. Mm -hmm. Maybe get some people that normally aren't out walking the streets to make this a daily or just a few times a week, make it part of their life and make help them enjoy it a little better. I think we're in a unique position here from looking at the walking. We've got the nickel plate trail mm -hmm. they can walk on. Uh, there's the trail that goes around the hospital, which right. is approximately one mile. And then we got the paved trail that, you know, the city maintains it. And I'm not sure the distance on it. So there's three options. You kind of maybe start slow, get on the hospital when it's a mile, then maybe move to the city once a little longer. And then when you, you're really into this, get on nickel plate and walk to Peru. You know, I, I was thinking back to the walking concept, though. I wonder if it's a, a, maybe a little generational. I know that my parents walked every day i mean they they literally believed in that and i think their parents did too have we kind of gotten away from that are we trying to get people back to it now yeah i think people are more relying on trans public transportation driving their car and it would be great to see people if you're only going a mile decide to walk that mile instead of getting in your car and driving there I know one of your board members, Dick Belcher, will ride his bicycle yes. into town, and, yes. and that is also good exercise. That's good Absolutely. exercise. Right. So it's, I think we just, we're trying to get the community that thought process, you know, let's try to get a healthy lifestyle. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, long term, it benefits everybody. Um, the healthier the community is, it becomes a more vibrant community. Uh, when you look at your, your personal expenses can go down. You might not need your high blood pressure medicine. You know, there's a lot of side benefits from this. But we do suggest, you know, if you're going to aggressively get into a walking program, you know, probably talk to your family sure. physician. Right. You know, make sure you're you're medically cleared and that you don't have an issue that you forgot about. So, you know, if you're going to really get into this real aggressive, just maybe call your, hey, I'm thinking about starting a walking program. Anything I need to do other than start slow, uh, you know, don't say, okay, my first day I'm going to do 20 miles. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to work. But, uh, you know, I definitely seek you know, if you have any medical issues at all, right. make sure that you're fit enough that we're not going to have another problem. Back to another one of the things you were talking about earlier. There are no ashtrays around these walking <laughs> paths, right? Correct. <laughs> so so maybe, just maybe, we can kill two birds with one stone here. Fast. You never yes. know. Yeah. We, we're hoping. We're hoping, hoping for so. that. It's yes. definitely a mindset and a culture that we exactly. like promote. Exactly. All right. Now, when are we starting? June the 4th. It will be okay. our first, uh, first day to begin and okay. we'll do a june 10th as our first saturday all right that uh that will kick off the and when you put all that together in terms of how they can register and when they can register be sure that we get that too okay so that we can pass that along to yep. to our listeners and also put it on our facebook page for people absolutely to jump into thank we, you yep. we would be happy to do that as thank well you. great great idea great thank idea you. i and i hope it works and i think it will work and and i think people get excited about it Good. and that's that's the whole yeah, game. Yeah, I think so the, the yeah. committee's goal is to keep it a, a fun for them because if it's, you just do the same thing over and over, it can get boring. So right. I, 
I've kind of heard they've got different things planned maybe uh, along these walks to help keep it exciting and keep it fun. Good. Yep. Right. I've offered to throw water balloons, and they didn't like that one either. So. You know, your ideas are just haven't gone over. They've <laughs> got every one of my ideas down. John Alley, as always, thank you very much. Jason C., Betsy Hines, anything else you'd like to add today? I think I'm done. I'm in enough trouble now. I need to stop. <laughs> Thanks for being here, and keep us informed with that walking idea, because it's a great idea. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.